Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagerus, and today I have a Henselt Machines Crewman deck for you guys. And this is the Lads of Cadwin deck, because we're using a lot of Cadwin units, uh, which is really nice with Hensel because obviously when you play him, you choose a bronze support machine or Cadwenny ally and play all copies of it. So we could actually use uh, Hensel to play all of our Siege Masters, all of our Ballista, all of our Siege Support, and all of our Reinforced Ballista, this being a machine, these being machines and Cadewen. So that's really nice. We also have a couple of Reaver Scouts in order to chain out some units. These allow you to play a bronze ally, choose a bronze ally and play a copy of it. So that's cool. We've got Death Mold, which will give us Weather Clear. We have Margarita, deploy, reset a unit and toggle its lock. So we can use this to reset units, which is really good against Nilfgaard, it's really good against Spellatel. There's a lot of decks basically that have very buffed units. Uh, Curse Skelliger, for example, is another example where you can get decent value out of Margarita, depending on which units are boosted. She's really good against Warcriers, which boost units. Then we have Ronvid of Smallmarsh. Whenever this unit is discarded or destroyed, set its base power to one and resurrect it on a random row. So this guy is a crewman. And he's a 10 strength and every time he dies, he comes back as a one, which is kind of in keeping with the Witcher lore. And uh, this is basically like a permanent crewman unless they lock it or, uh, what's the word? They lock it or they uh, artifact compression it. So, you know, he's a really good card to synergize with our machines. Similarly, the Siege Support are crewmen. The Siege Masters are crewmen. Hensels is crewman, so we have a lot of crewmen, which means that we should be getting a lot of extra damage from our ballista and our reinforced ballista because we have plenty of crewmen, which is really nice. On top of that, we have Shani. Uh, Shani, deploy, resurrect a bronze or silver unit and add two armor to it, so we can use her to uh, basically resurrect a unit, which we can then maybe use as a Hensel target, for example. We have John Natalis, play a bronze or silver tactics card from your deck, shuffle the others back. So we can use John Natalis to play reinforcements, commander's horn or decoy. And decoy is really nice because you can basically replay a machine next to two crewmen. You could replay Kidwelly Siege Master and use him to redeploy a ballistas unit. You could replay a Reaver Scout and pull another unit. You could replay Death Mold. You could replay Margarita. There's lots of different targets for the uh, decoy in here. Similarly, we have Madro. Madro is like Margarita in that it resets a unit and I quite like it in that regard. Spores, uh, basically you heal a unit and strengthen it by three. Spores, you reset a unit and weaken it by three. So Mutagen and Spores are really good. Um, I think in the current meta, and it's a decent draw with Dijkstra. Deploy, play the top two cards from your deck. And this is actually a spy unit, so you play him on the other side of the board. So you play him and you get the top two cards from your deck, uh, which generally is good. Some people like to run Scorch in this deck. I don't because it can be a little bit risky, um, as you don't necessarily know when you're going to find it. Um, but Dijkstra is generally quite good. And because we have Han Marvin's Blue Dream, spawn a copy of a gold card from your opponent's graveyard. And if it's a unit, but not an agent or a double agent, boost it by two. So we can use Han Marvin's Blue Dream to basically replay Dijkstra and double Dijkstra which is really nice. Alternatively, if they've played something that you want to play, then Han Marvin's Blue Dream is good for that as well. It's a very versatile card. Uh, and because Dijkstra only has four strength, you can actually quite easily kill him with some of your machines uh, or with Death Mold. And when he dies, you can then guarantee your second play. So even if um, you don't play him till round three, you do have options with your Han Marvin's Blue Dream in that regard. The only thing you have to be just a little bit aware of is if you play Dijkstra, it does have a chance of pulling Han Marvin's Blue Dream. So that is one thing that you're going to want to be aware of. But that's the deck. Uh, in terms of changes, some people prefer to run Muzzle. So you could run Muzzle instead of Han Marvin's Blue Dream or, you know, maybe Shani. If you want to run Neneke, maybe take out Margarita or Decoy if you feel like, you know, you'd like Neneke in the deck. Um, similarly, Scorch, though, those are kind of the targets that you could take out if you want to run those cards. And if you feel like there's not a lot of units to reset, but you're going up against a lot of weather, then you can actually run uh, Kedwenny Sergeant, which is a seven strength crewman, uh, which also clears weather from a row. So if you feel like your death mold isn't enough to deal with the weather, even though you can, you know, shiny and decoy it, then run a Kedwen Sergeant. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to jump into a ranked game. If you like this deck, hit that thumbs up button, uh, and I'll see you guys shortly. My men know the meaning of sacrifice. Men of Kedwen, attack! Okay, so up against Morvran and Reveal. This is actually okay, because if they do play Margarita, we can fix it with... Not Margarita, if they do play Cantarella, we can fix it with Margarita, because often they use the new card, which switches the strength of a revealed unit in your hand, and so they make Margarita... Not Margarita, Cantarella a one strength. So this is useful. Ronvid is great, Death Mold is good. We have way too many Ballistas, and way too many... Uh, well, basically just way too many Ballistas, and no... Uh, we have no... Uh, 
crewmen. So let's actually try and find some crewmen. There's one. Uh, I normally just get rid of my reinforced ballistas and try and find them later on. We can also get rid of the regular ballista and again try and find them later on. The question is, do we want one of each? I think having one of each is probably better than having two ballista. Reinforcements is a great pull there. We have Han Marvin's Blue Dream, but we don't actually have any other gold cards, which is a little bit awkward. We're going first. So a good opener is Ronvid. Ronvid is a great opener. Alternatively, K20 Siege Support is also a good opener. Uh, the thing with keeping Ronvid is that it's going to give him value out of his Cynthia if he plays it. So ideally, we'd rather have him lock this than this. But if he locks it, we can unlock it. So I think what I'm going to do is open with... Uh, with Ronvid. And nearly all of your units are agile rather than, as opposed to Rolock. So Deathmold is Rolock, but everyone else is more or less fine. Uh, we can actually just kill this with um, Deathmold, to be honest. And I think that is a good play here because can't be bothered dealing with Manganels. He might have another one, but if he has another one, you know, then he has another one. It is how it works. That is just kind of the way things are. But this way, at least we're negating some of his damage we could always lock it that's the other thing i mean we have marjoram if we need to reset anything um so actually playing margarita to lock something like a manganel would be a decent play as it is he doesn't have an another manganel as he would have played it now so you can see our crewman oh wow that is brave people don't typically play more than one golem we are down seven points. So we ideally need to make up seven here. The issue that I have is that, uh, actually what we can do is we can play the ballista. We'll play the ballista, this'll make us up the points. So we shoot the foot soldier, that goes to a three, and then we shoot all of the threes, um, like so. So that gives us enough points. And then, I mean, I would have liked to play the siege support, but because he revealed cards, we can't do it now. And we can always play the Siege Support with Hensel in a later round. Like, we can play the Siege Master now. And if we play the Siege Master and reveal the... Or shoot the Ballista. Uh, like, basically replay the Ballista, we get a lot of points. Yeah, so what he's going to do is he's going to turn this into a 1. Uh, that's basically his plan. We can actually also pull Vatia. So we can, we can play Vatia and reveal cards, but that's not really going to help us. Um... So if we play the Siege Master, we're actually going to get too many shots. Because I ideally what we would do is shoot everything. Uh, I guess we'll just do it. So this lets us replay the Ballista. And now this is in between two crewmen. So we get three shots. But these are all on two strength. That's four damage. That's eight damage. So it's a little bit awkward. But actually what we'll do is we'll try and get this nine closer to the seven then. Uh, it means that the last shot was a little bit wasted because we killed all of those targets. But you can kind of see the power of the Ballista at this point. And there's the play. He's turned it into a 1 and turned that into an 11. It's not really a big deal because we can reset this one and we can boost this one. So, you know, objectively we don't care. Um, what we can do here is we can reinforcements out a Reaver Scout. And then basically replay this again. Uh, so we would hit the 8, then the two sevens, then the two sixes, Which isn't bad. It's not a bad play. Um... Alternatively, we can play the Reinforced Ballista this, and then shoot this down to a 7, which then means if we do play other Ballista, we're in a pretty good spot. Hmm. How do I want to play this? I think we'll just do this. So then if we shoot this, we have three targets now. And if he plays Cantarella, we can reset her. Although if he plays Cantarella... We're still going to be ahead. I'm impressed. Congratulations. That's not very many points. Okay, so. Do we pull an extra ballista? No, I think we pull a siege master, right? So we'll play reinforcements. Uh, into a reaver scout. You one of us pull a siege master. And I'm going to put this here just to make another... Another spot for crewman, should I decide to Hensel this round. Although, I'm not really thinking I'm going to Hensel this round. So we'll play this here. I pass on we'll replay this. Round. And we shoot the eight. And we shoot all the sevens. And then we shoot all the sixes. And you can see they're now fives. And then if I get another one out, I would then hit all the fours. And so on and so forth. And Cynthia reveals the highest unit in my card hand. So this, for all he knows, this could be a Reaver Scout. So that is the other thing that's worth being aware of. And we can reset this. And we can reset this. So I think we're in a pretty good spot. Hmm. 
muzzle. Okay, so he's seven ahead of us. He has card advantage. If we play Mardrome, we get... Well, how many was this boosted by? Six. Six, seven, eight, nine. If we play Margarita, we get 11. I guess we play Margarita then. I don't think he's going to play anything else that we're going to really need to lock. What can I do for you? I don't think he's playing spotters, so all in all, this is okay. There's been a mistake. I'm no mage. We are still ahead. I think we need to save everything else. I think we have to pass here. The thing is, he's got a counterella, so he's going to get card advantage. Which he'll play next turn, but then we Mardrum it and get points. Ideally, we want Dijkstra. I think we're okay here. I think we're okay to just let him have this round. I'm not too worried about winning future rounds. Like, I think we got a, a lot of cards out of him. We got Cynthia, we got his uh, golems out, we got his Vatia. We got three of his gold cards. And we have carryover, so he can't dry pass us. We don't want Cadewens because we're going to be revealing them, so we'll mulligan him. Um, that's going to be our basically our win condition. And he's played, what, Muzzle? So we can basically replay Muzzle Royal Decree... So we can actually just play Royal Decree and find Dijkstra. And that's not a bad strategy. He's probably going to pass here. He's got card advantage, which he wants. Um, but we can just play... We play Mardrome into Mutagen and just fix this. It's a big play, but I don't think we're going to need it later on. And that gives us, you know, a lot of points. And there's the pass. Which is good, because now we can double Dijkstra on the final turn. Um, because we can... Actually, no, we can only single Dijkstra. We go any single Dijkstra, I stand corrected. We have Commander Swan and Decoy, though, for John Talis, which is good. The Reaver Scout is not ideal. It depends what we draw here, though. Yeah, we need to mulligan one of these. Ballista. So actually, this is good, because we can use the Ballista to pull... Uh, we can use the Reaver Scout to pull, pull more Ballista, in which case we want to play the Siege Support. Uh, and then we want to set them all up together. And then we can actually hand Marvin's Blue Dream into Royal Decree if we want to. Did he just kill that? Oh, I just killed it. That's really annoying. Unless I pull Shani. So I then hand Marvin's Blue Dream into Shani. So we, we'll do that. Uh, Royal Decree. We want Shani. Put her on a different row. Oh, actually, maybe should have stacked the row for Commander's Horn. Into Siege Support. There we what go. Do you want? I'm feeling relatively confident about this. We'll have a lot of spots for our crewmen. Um, we'll have lots of little crewmen pockets, basically. He has played most of his reveal, I would have thought. So I'm not too Attack! concerned here. So we'll play this one here. Uh -oh. Trouble approaches. And basically, I'll play this one. I'm just wondering, worried he's going to kill a crewman. So we'll play this one in the back row as well. Uh -oh. Also, I do need to stack approaches. units for my ballista. So I should be a little bit aware of that. Greetings. What is it? Off to the front. Ha! <laughs> that is not the target that you wanted to hit, buddy. Not the target that you wanted to hit. Okay, so he's going to shoot all of my units from one. It's kind of fine. That's an eight. Potentially, we just draw Natalis now until wait till he plays more units. Basically, I think we'll do that uh, into Commander's Horn, and then toot. And uh, we have a lot of points. We have a lot of points. There's been a mistake. There we go. So yeah, so this is what I was waiting for, was for him to basically show me more units that are similar strength. So now we'll pop this in between two of our crewmen. Shoot the eights. Shoot the sevens. Uh, shoot the sixes. And so you can see kind of how this is going to go down. And so could our opponent, because he forfeited. Um, and that is the deck. Like you can see, it's really strong. You have a lot of options in terms of what you want to play with your Hensel and how you want to play the different rounds. Um, and you can see that we were like quite confident in playing the Cadewen. And I kind of knew he was going to pass round two for card advantage. Um, and also the way that uh, Han Maven's Blue Dream allows you... I almost called it Han Maven's Wet Dream. But Han Maven's Blue Dream allows you to find the cards that you need. Like the Royal Decree, for example, is really useful there for the Shani to guarantee our Hensel. Anyway, I'll jump into another game and I'll showcase this deck in action once more for you guys. There is but one punishment for traitors. You want peace? 
Fight for it. Apparently it's a Nilfgaard party today. Nilfgaard are a little bit awkward because they can put spies in between your crewmen. Uh, so, what have we got? We have Dijkstra, Death Mold, Reinforced Ballistas, K20 Ballistas, Siege Master, Reinforcements, Commander Sword, and Marjoram. So we'll keep Marjoram because resetting his units is really good. Uh, I think what we'll do for now is Mulligan the Reinforced Ballista. I usually try and find these later on. You know, extra crewmen are always good. We have two Siege Masters, which works really nicely with the Ballista. We have a Support. I'm wondering if we need Commander Sworn and Reinforcements. Mulliganing Commander Sworn is risky because it means that you can pull it with your Dijkstra, which you don't really want to do. So that is the question. Although, you just have to be aware that you can pull it. There's John Atalus, which will give us Commander Sworn anyway. I think this hand is alright. I think this hand is alright. I mean, maybe we Mulligan a Siege Master and see what we get instead. Reaver Scout. Reaver Scout's good because we can use that to pull the Siege Master anyway. That is, like, choice there. And we would have probably used Reinforcements to find it anyway. So we are going first. No Ronvid, but I believe Ronvid is a soldier. Yeah, so I think you can actually pull him with reinforcements. So we have that option. If I play the siege support, they often just try and kill them. That is the thing. So maybe we want to reinforcements out Ronvid now. Um, the only thing is we don't have an unlock. Because Margarita, she is a... You can't pull her with reinforcements, I believe. She's a Temerian and a mage, but she's not a soldier machine officer or support unit. So we wouldn't be guaranteed that. In which case, maybe we play this just to try and bait his locks if he has them. Oh, and usually I stack the front row approaches. because we have a couple row locked units, the Reaver Scouts and the Death Mold. And we're going for a different strategy this round um, in that we've played Arcade Wenny now. And he's quite nice with the spies because he buffs them, which means he can't just shoot them with the... Uh, he can't just shoot them with the... Imperial enforcers that he's likely to play. Hmm. So if we go for Ronvid, he's going to orcs unlock both of them. Which is kind of an issue. So we have to kind of think about how we want to play this. How do we want to play this? We also have decoy as an option. We can decoy this and that would give us a choice. Or we pull out another support. But if I pull out another support, what he'll probably do but is put a spy next to it. Peddlers. So we would do this, um, which sets us up with lots of points. But he's likely to put a spy in between that gap. Because if you're going to place a spy, you may as well place it in between such that the crewman effects aren't as good. Like, that's just sensible. The thing is, ideally, we don't want to play ballistas till after he's played a few units, such that we can start shooting lots of things together. No! So if we pull a reinforced ballista, we can actually kill this. I think using reinforcements for the ballista is actually quite smart. It means that we can't use it for Ronvid, but alternatively, if I leave this Imperial Enforcer, it's just going to cause me trouble. So if we reinforcements out a reinforced ballista, squeeze that in here, we can then kill this. And we actually have the option with the K20 Siege Master of replaying the reinforced ballista. So if he plays another enforcer, we can kill that as well. Uh, and basically deal with him by just killing everything. We actually also had Death Mold. We could have gone with Death Mold there and zapped it. That would have also been a good play, now that I think about it. So maybe we didn't have to go with the Ballista here. There's the pass. We'll take the pass. That's fine. And now we're, I think we're in a pretty confident position uh, to try and drain him. Like, long rounds are good for us, but long rounds are good for him too. So potentially what we do here... Oh my god, all of the... All of the Siege Masters. Do I need this many Siege Masters? Probably not. I think all Mulligan one Ballista. So we, we have the regular Ballista we can use to try and pull things out. The other thing we, we could do is pass and try and find Ronvid. The question is how impactful do I think his card advantage is going to be? That is the kind of question that we have to ask ourselves here. Because I don't have a good opening play. But in the next round I can double Dijkstra. So I think we just pass here. I know having a long round against Nilfgaard is risky because they benefit from long rounds, but we benefit from long rounds too. And this way it gives me a chance to try and find Ronvid. Though I have to be wary of pulling... Actually, it doesn't matter if I call Commander Sword or Decoy because I have two tactics cards. So I was going to say I have to be a little bit careful with John Natalis. The one thing you don't have to be careful with John Natalis is with is Dijkstra. If not by strength, then by stealth. What do I really want here? I would like Margarita. I think Margarita or Ronvid would be the best draws. Shani's not bad either. 
But like Shawnee, I can find with Dijkstra and it should be okay. <laughs> Whereas these two are more situational. I think we have to leave it at this. I can't risk pulling an extra ballista. Because if I pull an extra ballista, then I don't have as much luck with my thing. Although actually, what we could do is mulligan the reinforced ballista. We can always resurrect a reinforced ballista and use that as our target. There we go. That was a good play. Because now I have the choice with Shawnee. I can resurrect the reinforced ballista. Or I can to hensel that. Or I can hensel the regular ballistas. So we have, we kind of have options, basically. Has he played any gold cards? He's not played any gold cards. So if he's smart, he takes the reinforced ballista. But he won't, he'll take the Kidwenny because it gives him points. Like, across the course of a round. Basically, people typically take this. Um. So maybe we should Shani the ballista now. But I feel like if we're going to Shani the ballista, we should probably play some crewmen. But we can't play these crewmen until we have a target for the crewmen. So I think we just Shani the ballista. Sure. And just shoot this. And then we can basically use the Siege Masters to replay this and set up a little pocket. And then we can use Hensel on this ballista. So we have, you know, choices basically. Or we use Hensel on this ballista, which is possibly better because he's not going to have a lot of units with the same strength. I'm assuming he'll take the Kidwenny. Although Emissary is also a good pick because he has Spice Energy. And ideally, he does need to get out his spies. What do you want? Okay, so now we play the Siege Master. Which sets up a crewman. We target this one. And we just take this guy out. Which is good, because then if we play the second Siege Master, we can actually kill an Enforcer, for example. And I guess he's going to go Vicavaro Medic. And just take the emissary now. Patience is not a virtue I am known to have. And he'll replay his Vicavara medic. Please wait, Your Excellency. I'm falling behind. That is, what you folk lack. that is an eleven, but we can reset that. We have, you know, two options for resetting him, so that's fine for us. The question then is, do we want to hensel this and get a bunch of ballista, or do we want to hensel? this and shoot everyone to pieces? The answer is I have no idea. I think we should probably do this and shoot the eights and then the sevens because if he plays more enforcers those are sixes so then we've got it set up that we have choice uh, in terms of how we kind of carry out this next play. We also have Margarita which is a lock which is useful so I'll take the emissary. Please wait your excellency. Falling behind. And then I guess he'll shoot the emissary so he has a target. Actually, that's a sensible thing to shoot as well. This is a seven. That's really annoying. So he's gonna kill this. I think what we do. No, we have to we have to go with the blister. The blister are really, really good. So we'll play this Siege Master. Hit this, shoot the seven. Shoot all the sixes, shoot all the fives, and then when we hand salt, we can pull these out and kill basically everything that is four or below, to be honest. So, actually anything that's five or below if he played fives, but this is good, this is good. I always find a way in. Making that a spy doesn't help him, because it's, you're, you're too slow, buddy. You're just too slow. So we're going to pop this in, and we put this next to the other crewman, so we have two, a crewman piece. pocket. And then we'll target the ballista, and we'll slot that in this gap, uh, like so. Shoot these, shoot these, shoot these, and then we play the next one, uh, I guess next to the crewman, so we get extra shots. Shoot these, and we'll shoot. actually I should have shot the 10, because I'm going to reset this one, so it, it would have been more sensible to shoot the 10. If we lose by one, then that is why. He's in such a really, like, a really awkward position here. So, I guess we want to look to play Commander's Horn now. Commander's Horn is fine now. Uh, we have our resets. We do still need to kill Dijkstra. I just realized I haven't killed him. But we have Death Mold, so we can kill Dijkstra. But we need to play this before we play Dijkstra. So let's do this. We could also command a decoy. If we decoy this, we would get... Let me think. It's not enough points, I don't think. We'd basically replay this and hit him for two, four, six. Nah, 
Commander's Horn is a better play. And the way we're going to toot is we want to toot such that, um, basically, that we hit the 7. And that maintains our protection from Igni. Because this is an 11. So then if he Ignis, he only gets 11 points. Um, so that's just kind of the strategy there. Interesting. So now he Ignis, he gets 22 points. Which is still fine. So now I think we play Dijkstra. Because we can kill him with Death Mold. So now we'll take Dijkstra and we'll just see what we get. Got Ronvid. So I'll set up another Crewman Pocket. And we can replay a machine. So what do I want to replay? If I replay this machine... No, that's only worth four. So I guess we play this... Uh, we don't actually have to play this on... No, we, if we play it here, then we get... Um, I value. I should have actually thought about this happening and positioned Ronvid slightly differently. We'll play this one. Shoot these. That'll do. And then we can kill Dijkstra with Death Mold, and we can replay him with Han, Ma uh, Han Marvin's Blue Dream. And then we reset all of his units. We could <laughs> kill Rainfarn and play him, but, you know, playing Rainfarn doesn't really help us. Man, this would be a huge hailstorm. Is that a 20 point to see her? She's normally a 10. I guess that's okay. He's putting things back in the deck. Interesting. Okay. So now we play Death Mold. Your will be done, sire. Houses, Thunder. Kill the extra. And this is kind of telling. You know, this is kind of telling. I wonder if he's got a row effect. This row is stacked. Like, that is a stacked row. Hmm. So these are currently 9 points boosted, she's 10 points boosted. So at the moment the reset is better on a Seer. And then Roach gets nice burned. Sky. Poor Roach. Everyone burns Roach. It's such a shame. Infiltrator. The thing is, all these infiltrators don't really help him because he can only kill one thing. Like, yes, he's making all of my units into spies. But he still only gets to kill one target. Okay, so what can we pull? Reinforced Blister, Reaver Scout, Siege Support, Decoy. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Doesn't really matter where we put him. Ballista. So do we have a pocket? We do. We have one here. Uh, so what do I want to shoot? I get six shots. I guess we'll just shoot this. And Decoy. What do I want to decoy? So I can decoy this guy. Um, if I decoy this guy... I can decoy Cantarella. <laughs> Draw a card. I don't want to decoy Cantarella. I think we decoy... Oh, we de decoy Joaquim. Play the top loyal bronze or silver unit from your deck and boost it by 10. Which would be a Reaver Scout, a Ballista, K20. That's not a bad play. Hmm. This is at least 10 points. But I give him like 7 or whatever, 8. I've got to shoot something. Uh, I think that's okay. It gives us protection also from Igni. 123 to 88. Jesus Christ. So this is worth 6 and 11. Okay, he kills an 11. That's not surprising. I hope we can trust you. We reset one of these. And then this is also worth 11 and 3, 14. We're currently up 30 points. I think we probably win. He can have one more gold until more silvers, but he's only got two cards. And he's played Rainfarn. He's played Vilgaforce. He's played Menno. Like, he's played a lot of his tempo plays. None of, neither of these are big enough that he'd get the boost. Shit, am I going to get Igni? No, there's a 17. There's a 17. I was going to be like, am I going to get, like, crazy Ignied? Uh, so spores, we'll reset that one. And now even if I did get crazy Igni, it would be fine. The biggest Igni he can get is a 17. The common folk. Oh, it's a reset. That's not enough points, buddy. Not enough points. A. Whew. 
There you go, long round. But we had all of the tools we needed to deal with Nilfgaard. Like we had the double resets, we had a lot of options for thinning. We got the double Dijkstra, um, which is really, really nice there. You saw we were in a situation where regardless of what Dijkstra pulled, it was going to be good. Um, and yeah, that is generally the deck. We played Nilfgaard today. Uh, but I feel like the deck is generally quite successful. I don't feel like you need Nenike because you have so many different targets for your Hensalt. But, you know, if you feel like you need her, you can add her. If you feel like you want to run Scorch, that's also an option. Um, I mean, Scorch would have been good to deal with his, uh, uh, whatever they're called. The guys that get stronger every time there's a spy. But it's a bit risky. That's the kind of point. Um, and, like, I like Decoy in that regard, but that's the one that maybe you could switch. If you like this deck, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments below what you thought if I misplayed, if you would like to see me play anything in particular, let me know in the comments below. And also check out the other videos I've done for this patch. We have a couple of Skellige decks. We have a uh, hand buff deck as well. And then we'll have more decks in the future. Beyond that, you can always subscribe to the channel. Today is Thursday and Thursday means Gwentleman Talk Show. Gwentleman Talk Show will be on at 10 p.m. CET. So European time at twitch.tv forward slash Gwentleman. Uh, be chatting with Swim. Dale and our guest about all things Gwent. So that is on Thursdays and that's where you can find me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. You can always subscribe to the channel. You can find me streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagoras, and on Twitter at Jagoras. Have a fabulous day, whoever you are and wherever you may be, and I'll see you next time.